So, basically what he was saying, I'm sorry, this is part, this, I guess you could just call this part two, was he knew the real person that he was going to form before he put that person in their fleshly tabernacle, okay? So he formed them, but he knew the person was the spirit inside of the body. The thing that he was forming was the body, but he knew the spirit. I knew your spirit before I formed thee, your body, your earthly suit, okay, in the womb, okay. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And before I let you come out of your mother with that earth body, I already sanctified you. Now, what does sanctify mean? And see, we could take this principle, and we, we could take this principle, we could take this principle, and really, really apply this thing in a general, in a general sense. The word sanctified means to set apart for sacred use, consecrate, make holy, and purify. So the word sanctify means to set apart, consecrate, make holy and purify. We all know that before God ever uses us, we have to be sanctified. We have to be consecrated. We've got to get in that place where we need to be with the Lord. Well, what God was saying to Jeremiah was, I already caused you to be purified, pure, anointed, set apart, in position for me to use you like I wanted to, before you even got to the planet. Before you even got out of your mother, before you even took the rite of passage through a woman's womb into the earth, I had already ordained, sanctified, and separated you. He sanctified him. See what I'm saying? He knew him. He sanctified him. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So not only did I know your spirit, not only did I sanctify you and prepare you and give you what you need and necessary equipment, anointed you, covered you, uh, gave you the, the, the gifts, the wisdom, the, the, the talents, the maturity, the, 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 the adaptedness to do what I've called you to do. But I also put my stamp on you. And I also ordained you and pushed you and positioned you in the office of a prophet. Now, let's take a side note here. Side note here because this right here shows us the three stages that we have to go through to be used as ministers of God. First stage is knowing God. Second stage is being sanctified, purified, consecrated, set apart, and made holy by God with cooperation of the Holy Spirit and your life in prayer, intercession, fasting, giving up stiff, all that good stuff. Third stuff, being ordained by God. Okay? Inter inter in interestingly enough, notice that the knowing part it consists of, the, of Jeremiah's spirit, meaning that our spirit has to know God first. The sanctified part consisted of God, Jeremiah's flesh, meaning that your flesh is dirty, so God had to sanctify your flesh to get the stuff out of your flesh that don't need to be there. And being ordained is meaning that you are whole, you are where you need to be, you are now in position to be used by God. So what God is saying to Jeremiah is, you don't got to go to school for this. You don't have to apply for this. You don't have to be no fancy preacher, no fancy doctor, no fancy lawyer, no fancy nothing. In fact, I'm ready to use you right now. I'm ready to ordain. I'm ready to do what I... In fact, I, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to use you. Right this minute, I'm ready to use you like nobody's business. Because I've sanctified you, I've called you out, and I've set it, I've set you, I've set you, I've set you apart, right? I've set you apart, and so that, that to me, is is really what this is all about, and that's a good revelation. I never, I never really caught that, but that that's a pretty good revelation that just came out of that. But here's what a lot of people do, even when they do. When God do tell him to go forth. This is what Jeremiah did. Watch what he did. This is so interesting. 
He said, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. So he was concerned about his earthly abilities, or his earthly, not necessarily earthly abilities, that's a word, wrong choice of word, earthly limitation. He was focused on his mistakes. And see, this is a, the culture of people around us. We tend to focus on our negative, but God has given us everything and more that we need to do what he has called us to do. Jeremiah is saying, look, Lord, I'm a child. I can't do this stuff. I can't, I can't, I can't go forth in the things that you're calling me to go forth in. You, you missed it. You, you know, he's basically insulting the Lord on the slate. Like God did not sanctify this boy. That God did not cause this boy to have everything that he needed to do what God called him to do. He was afraid. He was timid because he was being beat up. And, and not only that, if you really connect it back to the context of who Jeremiah's family was, they were priests. He was the son of Hilkiah the priest. And so Hilkiah the priest, and even the priestly process, dictated that a child could not do anything. Because a child needed to be taught, needed to grow. And for you even to begin to try to become a priest, you had to go through a series of rigorous tests, examinations, studying. And you couldn't even be a priest unless you were at least 30 years old. So, God is saying to Jeremiah, first of all, you and I knew each other before you even got here. Secondly of all, I sanctified you. So you don't have to go through all that sanctification that those priests went through. I already sanctified you. I already called you out. I already consecrated you. I already blotted out your sins. I already anointed you. I already equipped you with everything that you needed to do what I've called you to do. Thirdly of all, you're ordained. Not to do what your daddy did, which was a priest. And even that in itself brings in another point. God calls you to what he wants you to be, not what your family wanted to be. So you can even think on and dwell on the fact that Jeremiah had to make a choice that would have been very unpopular with his family group. Seeing that they all were priests. But Jeremiah was being ordained to be something that came with great persecution, great ridicule, and great rejection. The office of a prophet. Interestingly enough, today, a lot of people try to attain and obtain and ascertain and go forth in the things of what a prophet is or prophetess or whatever you want to call it. But, to be honest with you, that office is a very, very lonely office with a lot of persecution, a lot of rejection, a lot of pain, hurt, and a lot of solitude. It comes at a great price. People think that that office is just something that is wonderful because you get to see into the invisible realm and begin to discern and, 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 and speak forth the word of the Lord. And, but they don't realize that what you see and what you discern and what you speak is not always things that others want to hear. And yet, your faithfulness and obedience and trust is going to be put to the test. Would you still obey the Lord even though you're facing people that do not want to hear it and have the power to kill you, to ostracize you? to pull you down to destroy you you see it's a very vulnerable office you have to be extremely sacrificial and selfless to be a prophet of God so there was a lot of different things that Jeremiah had to pay for and, and deal with and so on and so on and what not but he told the Lord that I wasn't qualified because you know I'm a child and I can't be a priest because I'm too young and I don't have the abilities. I haven't gone to school yet. I don't know what's going on. You know, all these different things. But interestingly enough, he knew that that was the Lord. So what he didn't even realize was that the gift of discernment was already in him to point to the fact that he already had what he needed because first of all, he even recognized that that was God because he said, Ah, Lord God. And sometimes we can sit around here and use the very gift that we have qualified, that we have qualified inside of our spirits to say we're not qualified. For example, you call the preach and you preach it to yourself and you say some good stuff. 
you even write stuff on Facebook. You write stuff in your journal and your notes, and you you just woo. That's good. What I just said. But you actually go up there and get ready to, and someone invites you to their church. Oh, I'm not called to preach. I'm not called to do that. And that person say, well, I invited you because I saw on Facebook all these great quotes that you put up there. And I really like the message that the Lord brings through you. And I think you should bring it in our church. See, the problem with a lot of us is not that we're not qualified. We are overqualified. It's we're not confident. And we don't trust God to release the gifts that he has placed inside of us because guess what those gifts are not stuff that you can see it's not stuff that you can touch and it's not always stuff that you can understand they are intangible realities from the heavenlies but once put with faith they manifest God like and God sized miracles it's okay to recognize that you have a gift But in order to flow in that gift, you can't just recognize that you have a gift. You have to allow God to create inside of you, with co cooperating with Him. You have to cooperate with God and have faith that even when you don't see the gift, you know the gift is there, but you don't see it. You can walk out that gift, live out that gift, demonstrate that gift, and when you begin to take that leap of faith, see that gift manifested and bless lives and, and be able to build up the kingdom of God and begin to edify the kingdom of God and at the same time destroy the works the devilish tactics of the kingdom of the enemy Amen So Jer God responds to Jeremiah now in verse 7 and he says Say But the Lord said unto me Say not I am a child don't look at your current stance. Stop trying to define your spiritual age, mentality, maturity, ability, calling, and grace by your earthly identity. Because that's not even you anyways. Amen. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send. God's beginning to tell him, no, you're going to do what I've called you to do. And see, sometimes... This is something else that we have to rec recognize. God knows that he's conscious of time, but he's above time. If he calls you at 15, he calls you at 15. Just make sure he called you. Amen. If he calls you at 90, he called you at 90. He called Sarah to give birth to Israel. She was the mother of Israel. At 99 years old. She had so many earthly limitations, it wasn't even funny. But God when he steps in and his hand is upon your life and he has truly called you to do what he's called you to do no earthly limitation will be able to block the miraculous power of God because the miraculous power of God will come in and what he said for your life the promises that he has made that will come through you will happen through you it will not happen through somebody else it will happen through you just the way he said it because the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, not that he is the son of man, that he should have to what? Repent. Has he not spoken it? Shall he not do it? Amen. Praise God. So God is saying to him, say that you are a child. I don't care about that. I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And whatever I tell you to say, you're going to say it. God completely overrided his excuses. And so I've come to ask you, when will you stop making excuses? When will you stop when will you stop making excuses about the call and the plan of God for your life? When will you stop trying to uh stagnate yourself because of things that people say about you or because of fear, because of doubt or because of it's time to come forth amen you have everything that God has spoken is inside of your spirit it's just waiting for your faith and your confidence to come to the level of what he's already called and ushered for your life and when it comes to that level <coughs> things will begin to take place and his will will be done and you will be in his perfect will not his permissive will amen 
So, uh, verse 8, be not afraid. He comes against the spirit of fear. A lot of things that uh, we deal with as, 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 it, as it pertains to the calling of God. He says, be not afraid of their what? Their faces. Don't be afraid of those people. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. God is saying to him, don't be afraid of people when they talk about you and stuff, or when they try to, in this case with Jeremiah, try to probably kill him or put him in jail or whatnot. I'll be with you, and I'll deliver you. Amen? If God is for you, you know, no one could be against you. Amen? Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched his mouth. Ah! Now comes the activation. See what I'm saying? Now that the fear has been gone, now that all the excuses have been gone, God can then come into the earth realm and begin to do something. He can begin to activate. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Boom. And he can say the same thing to us. Is he saying that? Yes, he is. Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. Amen. Here's what it says. See, this day, I have this day, I'm going to stop right here, set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and pull, pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Today, see God don't waste time. When he comes and he commissions and he calls, he does it right then and there. See what I'm saying? He does it right then and there. He said, today, you over the nations, your mouth has authority to affect nations. The enemy doesn't want you to open your mouth. Because if you open your mouth, you'll shake things, you'll shift things, you'll shift regions, atmospheres, lives. You'll do things, you'll do damage to the camp of the enemy and increase the efficiency and capacity of the kingdom of God. You say, why you don't want... Well, if you just... You don't have to necessarily speak a prophetic word, but if you just speak the gospel to somebody and they come saved, the power of a mouth, the power of speech is incredible. No wonder why. God had to diverse their speech in Genesis chapter 11 at the Tower of Babel. Power of speech is unifying. Causes things to be done, manifest. Causes things to come to fruition. One of the signs of the church, the very first thing that God touched in the new Pentecostal church in the book of Acts chapter 2 was the tongue. James 4 says the tongue is an unruly evil. Well, if you get that tongue under control, it could be the greatest blessing to not just you, but to the world around you. Amen? He said, I put you over nation, over the kingdoms, to root out, root out, pull out stuff that don't need to be there. Pull down, pull down structures, principalities, ideologies, physical barriers that are stopping the glory of God and the things of God and the manifestation of God, the promises of God from coming forth. To destroy, destroy idols, destroy false gods, false ideas, false false uh, realities, these different things, and to throw down, throw down uh, structures of, 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 of power that deviates from the will of God, to build, now he's talking about building the kingdom of God, and to plant, and to begin to bring forth harvest, amen, so this is the power of a call, this is the power of a call. My question to you is, will you take the power of the call? Will you, will, you, will you accept the power of the call of God in your life? Or will you keep running from it, and running from it, and running from it, and running from it? Realizing, not realizing really, that all this power is on the inside of you. Saints of God, it's time for us to stop running. It's time for us to stop, from, to stop running away from what God has called us to do. And to run on in Christ and do what does save the Lord. Because if we would do what does save the Lord, everything will work out. The blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear but of power that goes that call calling. Love, the character of that calling, sound mind, the mentality of that calling. Amen? It's time. It's time. It's time. Acts 1 8. When the Holy Ghost is coming for you, I will give you power. There'll be power placed on you. 
fact, I'll read it because for some reason I can't remember the exact wording of that scripture. It's one of my favorites. And I'll just go ahead and read that real quick because it all goes back to the calling that you have to accept. And it's never for yourself. It's always for the world. It's always for the people around you. It says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Well, Jeremiah didn't have the Holy Ghost, but he had the touch of God on his mouth. And the touch of God on his mouth was enough to give him power over nations and kingdoms. To root out, to pull down, to throw down, to destroy, to build and to plant. And so I'm saying to you, you have the Holy Ghost. And not only do you have power to do like what Jeremiah did, but you have power to do what Jesus did. If not greater. Because Jesus said, greater works shall you what? Do. Because I go to my Father, which is in heaven. Bible says the harvest is plenteous but the laborers are few pray ye that God send laborers into the harvest what fruit are you going to produce in this season are you going to produce the fruit of doubt and selfishness and fear or are you going to rise up into who God has called you to be confident in him not in you but in him who is able to do all things and do what he's called you to do and so I'm going to pray right now that God begins to build up. And God begins to build up, build you up in the calling that he's called you to. And begin to build you up in what He's wanted, that he wants you to do. Whatever it is that he wants you to do, that he builds you up. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially. He builds you up. Most importantly, that he breaks down everything that is hindering you from walking in the call of God for your life. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for those people that are watching right now on this camera. Father, I'm asking you right now that you would break down every wall, everything, break the fetters, break the chains that would cause them to feel limited in what you've called them to do. And free your people to know who they are, what their assignment and purpose of the earth is, and give them the next step. Remove confusion, remove fear, remove doubt, remove powerlessness and helplessness. And invigorate them with a fresh fusion, infusion, Lord, of faith, of the Holy Ghost, fire and power, and of wisdom and maturity, and of boldness to go forth in what you've called them to do. And Lord, I thank you for the fruit that shall be produced. I thank you that the fruit of wickedness and fear and, and, and evilness and doubt and self-pity and insecurity and, and laziness and sluggishness is being uprooted and that you're planting the tree that will not, not wither but will prosper in the name of Jesus Amen be blessed and I just want to encourage you to go forth in what God has called you to do don't be afraid it's your time the set time is now